Hey guys, Tim here with You Can Man on my very first YouTube video. Uh, this video will cover the first part of the library renovation. This room will be our library slash sitting room slash uh, piano room. So I wanted to show you some before pictures. So here is what I'm gonna do on this wall and this video will cover this portion. So I'm gonna be installing a pocket door on this wall. It is a load bearing wall. So I'm gonna have to install a header here. So this is what this part will look like. All right, moving right along. Not gonna do anything on that wall. This wall here will be built-in bookshelves and some cabinets and a desk on that left-hand side. Not exactly sure what this is gonna end up looking like, uh, but we shall see. All right, next um, I'm gonna be enclosing this wall here. So I gotta build out, I gotta frame out on that right-hand side um, and then install double French doors. All right, let's get to work on phase one. So this is gonna be the wall that will accept this pocket door that I'm gonna be doing. So a pocket door will go in this doorway. So I'm taking off all the trim now. Obviously this is sped way up. I think I sped it up like a thousand percent. All right, then taking out the door jams. And I, I'm kind of taking this out a little bit careful because I might be reusing some of this stuff. All right, kind of scoring that corner there. So I cut through the drywall tape. That way I'm not ripping into the other drywall that I'll be keeping. Same on the ceiling, obviously. So I'm going through the process of showing and fil or filming pretty much every aspect of this because I, I love seeing the finished product on stuff, but I, I want to see the process, right? So if I'm watching some video of this major renovation, like, okay, for example, this old house, they always show tons of how this is done. And so I wanted to show that, um, for this renovation. So that's great that I'm doing this pocket door and stuff, but I wanted to show like how I'm actually going about doing that. I am obviously leaving out a lot of specific stuff like measurements and this sort of thing. There are other videos that I'll link to where uh, guys do a really good job of explaining, you know, how you go about fitting that pocket door hardware into the rough opening and all your measurements and all that kind of stuff. I'm not really getting into that on this video, but at the same time, I wanted to show the uh, the process of, of everything, right? So I wanna show you what I did. <clears throat> so here, taking out the face plates and taking out the other baseboard. I had originally intended on not taking out all the drywall, but decided to go ahead and do that because I had to reroute some electrical. And then I also wanted to put insulation in for sound dampening purposes, because uh, we're gonna have a piano in there. And then also to keep it quiet for whoever's hanging out in there so they don't have too many uh, screaming kids uh, <laughs> bothering them. So I think my wife's actually gonna do, this might kind of become like her office kind of area so she'll spend a lot of time in here. So I wanted it to be you know, as quiet as possible as we could get it. So um, opening this entire wall up allowed me the opportunity to put insulation in to kind of knock down some of that sound. Oh man, it's really satisfying watching this go by this quickly because it took a long time. Okay, before we get into taking out that load bearing wall, wanted to show you where the loads are coming from. So I got a roof load coming down and I've got a ceiling load on just this one side, right? So not on the other side of the wall, just on this side of the wall. So what I did is I tied in those roof braces into the ceiling joist and then that way it would be fully supported when I do my temporary wall, which I'm just about to show you here. All right, temporary wall time. 
All right, gotta go cut some stuff. All right, I actually cut these wrong, but I think I had to cut out some video here, but anyways, the basic idea is I wanted to pressure fit everything in. That way I'm not having to use any screws and I'm not going into the ceiling at all. That way I don't have to patch any holes or anything like that. And it's temporary, so it's totally fine to just have it pressure fit like this. All right, yeah, I screwed that up. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now I'm having to disconnect all the electrical. That uh, switch box was kind of in the right place for where the doorway used to be uh, before we did our major renovations back in 2009. So I've actually, I've, I've worked on this wall before. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but the doorway used to be a little bit more to the right and I moved it over so that that switch needed, it was kind of in a weird spot, right? Cause that didn't get moved. The doorway just got moved. Um, anyways, hope that makes sense. So I'm having to move the switch over to uh, where it should be. And then on that left-hand side, those wires there, they gotta, they gotta move out of the way because I, I gotta have clearance for my pocket door. So what I ended up doing is tucking all those wires into the header. Um, that was an idea my uh, good buddy and neighbor Josh had to do. All right, here I am, I think, finally getting to taking out some actual structure here so I can take that old header out. All right, another quick thing too. Um, I'm, I'm trying my best not to mess up the drywall on the other side of the wall. And so that way I don't have to do any drywall work over there. So it's possible, you don't have to take all of it out to do this. You could just uh, take out the one side and you should be good. So I'm kind of taking my time, making sure that I'm not ripping into that other drywall. All right, here comes the header, done. All right, I think I'm measuring for my king stud here. So that, that's that's the board that the header is gonna kind of meet right up against. And then you have jack studs, which are gonna hold the header up. So you'll see me doing that. Okay, so with this wiring, like I said, I'm having to, to tuck this in and I'm gonna run it through uh, the gap in the header. So the header is made up of two two by eights, uh, or well, yeah, two two by eights with a half inch piece of plywood in between them, right? So I've got a gap there that I can utilize to tuck that uh, wiring up in in the uh, in the header there. All right, just making sure everything's level uh, for my king stud on that right hand side. All right, so this is the other side here, the <clears throat> the king stud on the other side. You see I drilled a hole through that stud so I could uh, run the wiring through there. Now, I could have gone through the attic and then just came on the other side. So that way it would have been like completely out of the way. However, I didn't have enough wire, meaning like I would have had to have done a junction box up in the attic and I really just didn't want to do that. So this was the next best thing for sure. All right, measuring for the header. All right, so here's one half of the header. So normally I would not build a header in place like this. I would, I would build it separately and then lift it into place all at once. But since I was doing the um, these the electrical wires going through the header, decided to just build it in place and be way easier. All right, measuring for my jack stud there. Here we go. All right, so the jack is what's actually holding up the header. 
And making sure that was for sure level and everything, plumb. All right, bringing in my other jack stud. And let me quickly mention too that <clears throat> there was definitely a time that I did not know how to do any of this and this would have been super intimidating for me. Um, but once I saw it done, a um, good friend of mine years ago, Julian, and he's actually the reason why you can man has the name you can man because he would always say what one man can do, you can do as well. And so that's where the name actually came from. So I had Julian show me how to do a lot of this stuff, including taking out a load bearing wall. Um, anyways, all that to say, just, just as an encouragement that you can seriously do this. This is not something you have to hire a, uh, a contractor to do, especially something like this. This is not a huge, huge project. It's, as far as the load bearing wall is concerned, um, it's not that big a span pretty straightforward you can totally do this so uh, right here I am tucking away all of the wiring and you can see I'm gonna sandwich it in between the two um, two by eights that make up the header and I already put in that half half inch plywood spacer so that's to uh, build it out to make sure it's the same width um, as the wall yeah I mean I'm just a normal dude, a uh, homeowner, I'm not a contractor, I'm not an expert on really any field, and if I can do this, you can do it. All right, so bringing in my other half of the header here, and I think I was measuring to, that way I can make some marks on there to say, hey, the wires are right here. Yep, I'm drawing on there, caution, wires. Okay, so the uh, header's done, so now I can fully take out the load bearing wall and get to work on the other stuff. All right, just drilling through. I think I had to move one wire over, so I like brought it up through the attic and then back down. All right, and here I'm showing you that my wife wanted that outlet to be switched, right? So there's a way that you can run wiring to do this, where the bottom switch is, um, turns on and off with the switch because we didn't have any um, overhead lighting in, the, in that room and we're not planning on having any overhead lighting. So I um, made that a switched outlet. So you can do a search on YouTube. Maybe I'll put a link um, down below on a good video to show how to do that. Okay, so like I mentioned before, I'm not showing like every single detail of what I'm doing with the uh, pocket door here. There are other really, really great videos that some guys have done that show um, in more detail um, what I'm doing here. So the kit itself comes, I think, for like a 36 inch door and my door was a 30, is a 32 inch door for sure uh, so you have to cut the frame down it's super easy it's not it's not hard at all um, you do have to cut through some metal so I'm using a hacksaw here to do that all right I think I'm just adjusting the stop there and this is a soft close it's really really cool soft close and open um, so if you're gonna do this might as well just spend the extra money and get the one that does the soft close and open all right, so here I am marking screws that I'm going to put a hole or marking where I'm going to do screws to put the top part of the frame for the pocket door on. All right, using these type screws. All right, I mean, it's easy as that. You just slide it over the screws there, it kind of holds it in place temporarily. Then you can uh, make sure everything's level. Really important that that's super, super level. Because remember, this is, you know, your pocket door is going to be sliding on this. So if it's not, you know, if you got this like way off level, then it's going to just 
slide by itself, you know, one way or the other. So you, you want to make sure that it's dead level. All right, and use these screws to fasten everything in. I wasn't sure, I didn't want any screws sticking out, so I used those kind of flathead screws, because at that point I didn't know where's the door gonna stop and all this stuff. All right, this is um, the part of the thing that uh, that I'm putting in now, that the drywall connects onto. So these are supports, but also um, it's metal, but then it's got wood in it, and that's where the drywall connects to. So just kind of showing that. All right, and pretty close to finished here. Uh, I think I'm just gonna show the latches that go on the top of the door that then connect to the uh, slider part. Yeah, so here's that. And then I didn't actually film putting the door in. Maybe I'll try to get one of those, but here it is, my daughter trying out the door. Um, yeah, everything's great. So thanks for tuning in for part one. So look forward to part two uh, coming up here.